everybody, I'm Dana Alatavi and um, yeah guys, oh my god, this is gonna be my getting divorced mukbang, woo! Okay, so, oh my god guys, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. I love fries with ketchup. And I'll always suck the ketchup out of this. I don't care if the employees touched it. I don't care who touched it and if they washed their hands or not. I'm putting my lips on it. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Guys, guess what? Guess what, guys? Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, so Friday, today is July 11th, right? AKA okay, free Slurpee day. July 8th, that was a Friday. I went to the courthouse here in Capolet and I wanted to get court paperwork for Brian to, for my husband Brian to, you know, have to appear in court because me and him are trying to get a divorce. It hasn't been working out. We're not coming to an agreement. Well, he doesn't want to come to an agreement. I do because. We bought a car together. The car was 43000 I put $20,000 down, and he's supposed to pay the rest, right? But now that we're not together anymore, I want half the car, or I want what I put down. No more, no less. But Brian's like, no, I want to keep it all. And I'm just like, dude, I know in the military, you re-enlist and they give you a re-enlistment bonus of like 7,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 or whatever. But this right here, what I just did, the down payment for the car, wasn't your re-enlistment thing gifted from me to you. I always make sure there's no pickles, there's no cheese because I hate pickles and I don't like cheese like that. Like, it gets stuck up here and it's just not me okay yeah so Brian wants to keep the car and then guess what so when you get divorced in the military the military can mm-hmm mm. mm. the military can send you back, can send the spouse back home. And the military will pay for all the shit in the house to get sent back home to wherever she want to go. And her car. And Brian said he was going to do that. But he didn't say it like, hey, don't worry. I'll have your car shipped and all your stuff shipped. Don't worry. It wasn't like that. It was, fuck you, bitch. I'm going to send your, I'm going to have your ass sent back home. Watch, watch. Like, that's how he literally said it. And I was, like, literally all down. I was down. I was like, yes, I'm going to get sent back home. Woohoo. Yeah. Hoopla. Kumbaya, my lord. Like, I was so excited. Like, so excited. And I was like, you know what? Like, this was in December. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to live my best life. Like, every freaking day has to count. Because my husband was in Japan. And I was here in Hawaii. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to live my best, best life. Because I don't know when they're going to ship me back home. I don't know. Turns out, Brian actually never signed that paperwork for me. It's called early release of dependence. He never started that paperwork for me. And I don't know why. Because, I mean, the military would have just paid for it. He didn't have to pay for it. So now, I want Brian to give me half the car back. Okay, what I put down in the car. Like, if you're going to keep the car, give me half the car that I put in, you know? If that was his car completely, he could just have that shit. Like, I'm not an entitled bitch like that, you know? But, I want $6,000 to relocate myself back to the East Coast. Because that money was supposed to come from the military. But since Brian told me he was going to do that. But he didn't do that. And his command, Mr. First Sergeant Kern. 
said he was gonna do that too, but like he never like kept up with Brian whether he's doing it or not. So yeah, I want 20K and a 6K to move myself back home. And um, I totally didn't mind doing this like verbally with Bryant, but because we have a no contact order because he threatened to kill me, we had to do it through his command, aka Miss First Sergeant Kern, aka First Kern. And uh, Mr. First Sergeant Kern was completely unfair, unprofessional, very, very borderline help, useless. And, um, him not, Mr. Kern not doing his job completely just, like, put me in a crappy situation. So, Mr. Kern not doing his job literally put me in, like, five different shitty situations. So... Mr. Yeah. That's and then I want Brian to pay for my attorney fees. I didn't want to get an attorney. I didn't. But because it's come to that now, I want Brian to pay for my attorney fees. My new um yeah guys, so you guys wanna know? So like I said, I out of breath I'm so sleepy um oh yeah so today's 7-eleven right I went to the courthouse to get court paperwork for Brian to get summoned into court July 8th Friday at like 2 p.m. or something Saturday <laughs> okay Friday, right? I went to the courthouse to get the court summon paperwork for Bryant. Uh, guys, I cried so much. Like, it's just an open wound that hurts, you know? And, like, any little step, an unnecessary step, and even the steps that you have to do, like, it all just freaking hurts. It all just freaking hurts, and, like, I'm still very emotional about it. Um, and... Yeah, like, I'm just still really emotional about it. So I went to the courthouse. I like, cried so much. I, I called my little sisters, and I cried to them about it. I called my mom, and I cried to her about it. And she literally wanted me to, like, hurry up and, like, shut the fuck up because she wanted to go clubbing. Um, I talked to, like, three of my friends about it, and I just wouldn't stop crying. Like, it hurts to get these papers and be like, damn, this is what it's come to, you know? So... Later that night, that Friday night, I went clubbing and I saw Brian at the club. <laughs> he was with this girl. And to be honest, like, yeah, she wasn't like the prettiest girl. And my ego's already like past the roof, you know? Uh, but even if she's like a good person, like, you know, just. I'm just happy that he's going out and meeting new people, you know, meeting new people and just trying to move on, you know, finding a new love life, whether they're serious or a distraction or not, you know, if they're a hookup or if they're long term, like, I'm just happy that he's, you know, doing his thing, like wanting to move on. Like, I love that because it wasn't easy for me to like go on a date with a guy like all i would do is like look at them and hate them and be like why aren't you brian and then when we you know like try to do other stuff like i would just be like but this is so wrong because this isn't brian you know i don't know if guys are the same in that way but i'm just glad he's moving on he's doing different things i'm glad i'm glad i'm happy i'm happy um but when Brian got served the paperwork 
to go to court. This is so funny. So my friend comes from behind, from Brian's behind. Brian's here. Brian's here. My friend comes from behind, gives Ryan the paperwork. And he was like, hey, are you Castillo? And Ryan was like, yeah. And then Brian sees the paperwork and he's like, that's not me. And then Brian sees me and he's like, wait, that yeah, is me. <laughs> it's just funny. It's like, dude, why are you lying about your identity when it comes to legal fucking, <laughs> legal freaking reasons, you know? But, yeah. We have a court date, August 31st. I don't know if, he, if he's going to be in ITX. I don't know if he's going to be in Trinity and Cali. I don't know. But he has to appear. And I promise whatever I'm asking for in this divorce is really reasonable and not ridiculous. So... Hopefully they all get approved. At one point I did want spouse support, but now I don't really care. I just want things to end, you know? I genuinely, I genuinely want to move on with my life. And, you know, moving on with your life legally is very, very good. So, yeah. The lady at the um, clerk, the clerk ladies and at the courthouse. Uh, she was like, you served him that fast? It was so funny. I was like, yeah, like I just saw him at the club and I had the papers in my car and I was like, here it is. <laughs> and she looked at the time and she was like, 1 a.m. <laughs> She's like, you should have your own serving company <laughs> yourself as. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> like the devil works hard, but Donald TV works a little harder. Yeah. Um Brian, um, Brian's Sajmaj, Sergeant Major, is Latino. I don't like, but I don't, I'm not attracted to Latinos, you know? And it's so rare for Latinos to, like, hit on me, you know? Not, not realizing, like, Latino men don't also like me. I don't know why. Um, but... Except Dominicans. Dominicans hit on me all the time. But Dominicans are like a different type of Latino. But Brian Sergeant Major is Latino. And wow. Wow. He is very handsome. He is very, very, very good looking. Very handsome. He's been in for 22 years. He, um... He's just, you know, like, say what you want to say, but a sergeant major is a sergeant major. But if you're a Latino or black or Asian, like, any cultured man and you have that title, like, you're not just a sergeant major, in my opinion. Like, say what you want to say. Like, you can't change your mind. Like, that sergeant major is not just a sergeant major. He's a Latino sergeant major. Like, his representation to the Latino culture is huge. And it's not just the Latino culture. It's, like, to the white people too like hey we're here too we qualify you know like here and um to the black people too and like the asian you know like all the minorities you know <sighs> so yeah like, i'm so proud of him i'll never i'll never get over you i'll never overcome you mr sajmanj like i had a I had three little small conversations with the Sajmaj, with my husband's sergeant major. Wow, that man conducts himself so well, so professionally. He is literally the coolest person I have ever talked to in all of Oahu. 
in the last three years and it was just through email like dude if ah uh, he literally said to me that he's gonna call me at 9 a.m like i okay he emailed me a long time ago i emailed him back like like a week ago and then he's like i'm gonna call you at 9 a.m <laughs> I was so nervous. I was like, ooh, 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 uh. like, what do I say to you? What do I say? What don't I say? Like, what do I do? Like, uh. so I told him that I'm gonna be busy for work, but here's an email of like, cause he's like, I'm gonna, I wanna talk to you about this, this, and this. And I was like, you know what? Let me just write it on an email because I might be busy. And I was, a, I maybe was kind of a little busy that morning. But guys, I don't think I would have known how to react. I would have been stuttering. I would have been like, eh, 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 eh. talking to Sajmaj. I would have been sweating. I would have been like, yo, this moment, you own it. You only got one shot. <laughs> like, guys, it may sound like I'm crushing on him. No, I'm just like super like mesmerized. Like, wow, dude, you are king i read his whole bio twice because i on like the marines website like it has like the bios wow wow like double salute like use bad like b-e-d b-e-d like hell yeah that guy like yo like that guy could whatever's happening oh my god that guy literally whatever's happening in ukraine like he's the type to shut it down whatever's happening wrong in the world like that dude will shut it down honestly like i had some problems with my husband's first sergeant for like literally seven months seven months and mr sajmaj like he killed that shit in like three days he's like what's your issue here's the solution and then i asked him like what the hell he was like, this is why. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe not exactly what I want to hear, but, but at least I got the answers. Like, at least now I know why, you know? He's just, he's just so admirable. Like, I've, I'm just so, I'm just so like, wow, I'm talking to a sergeant major and he's Latino. Like that shit will always, always like, that is one of my best memories, talking to a sergeant, Lat sergeant major Latino, a Latino sergeant major, sorry. That is epic. That is beautiful. Like someone take a picture that's literally Rosa Parks shaking hands with uh, Martin Luther King, like, When Saj Maj is present in the room, nothing will go down in a bad way. Like, <laughs> that's not weird. Like, Saj Maj has everything under control. Like, he is the Saj Maj. He is the Saj Maj. He has been done, been the Saj Maj. Like, sa like, I... How could you not love him? How could you not admire him? How could you not look at him and be like dude like i want to be you so bad like you are the inspiration you like rewrote that shit and you you are like oh my god dude like i don't even read but like you are so uh fine okay yeah you're fine like really fine um but like you're just so classy. Like, you are the definition of a Saj Maj. And you are a Saj Maj, so, yeah. Shout out to Saj Maj. I'll never, I'll never get over you. Um, you have been extremely helpful, extremely communicative, and, and I'll always look up to you, dude. I'll always look up to you. And I don't know what I would do if I ever saw you in prison. I'd, I'd probably be like, eh. I'd probably wanna shake your hand and be like, oh, like these are the hands you use to do pull-ups in. You know. But once my divorce gets actually finalized, I would love to write him a letter. Um, literally like what I'm saying in this video because the conversations that we had were very professional. It was like, hey, this is what's happening. I'm like, 
okay what about this here okay what about this uh here okay done done like there's nothing more to say like he ended everything like he shut it all down right there so next time i talk to sajmaj will be august 31st and hopefully things go somewhat in my way or in my favor and then once i'm officially divorced from bryant i'm gonna write a letter to sajmaj telling him how much he means to me but not like that okay like just like how you're a latino sad much like oh my god guys watch this be like a fucking nine rigs <laughs> but literally sad much i can't believe you like honestly there's something so different about colored men in uniform yeah colored men in uniform like you just know that they care a little bit more than like the non-colored military service members like you know what I mean like I felt like talking to Mr. Kern was talking to just like a wall a human without a brain like a dumbass um, a lot of times you know but talking to a colored person and high authority like you just you just know everything's under control and guys let me tell you I had a problem with the lieutenant colonel in 06 and I was like you know what you know what you know what you know what I was done I was done because honestly when you talk to military people like you can talk to them but like they kind of don't care a lot of the times like they have so much other things on their plate or they just really don't care i was talking to this lieutenant colonel and i was like you know what i'm done i'm i'm done talking to you can you please pass the phone or an email or have a lieutenant colonel of color talk to me and that lieutenant colonel was like oh and then he had a vietnamese female lieutenant colonel talked to me and that bitch shot it the fuck down and i was literally like oh my god i'm talking to a vietnamese second generation lieutenant colonel oh, like that shit's so epic for me so yeah sajmaj like double salute i fucking love you um but yeah hopefully me and my husband get divorced soon so you know every i'm just out everyone's hair and um Thank you for your service and yeah, thank you everybody else for listening to my video. This is my first mukbang in forever. Yeah guys.